Welcome back, my guys. So, did you pick up an analog Super NT like a lot of us? I love this damn thing. It is an amazing way to play Super Nintendo. Um, we have a lot of options with this on how to play our games, um, what games to get, all that kind of stuff. But today I wanted to talk about different options you have as far as accessories that I recommend for this device. So, without further ado, let's get this party started. Okay guys, first up, what I want to talk about is the 8-bit dough retro receiver. As you can see here. So this little guy simply plugs in to the controller ports. Pretty decent fit, they're not loose, they're not overly tight, they're just right, they're not gonna fall out. Now the cool thing with these is you can get them separate. You can buy these individually. Um, they typically are around 20, maybe 25, sometimes cheaper. I bought mine originally for like 15 bucks each um, on sale. But the cool thing with these is if you did buy the uh, matching 8-bit though controllers that were released, you know, with the, the launch of the Super NT, you know, you get one of these. So that's pretty cool. You can pair that with the controller. Or if you buy this separately, you do have other options as well. You can use the old 8-bit though controllers, whatever. As long as it's Bluetooth, it's going to work. So if you're down with it and you want to play Super Nintendo games and not use a Super Nintendo controller, say you want to use a PS4 controller or even a PS3 controller or any other Bluetooth controller you have, you can pair that to the retro receiver. Pretty nifty stuff. So it gives you tons of options. For me personally, I like to use original Super Nintendo controllers or the wireless 8-bit though. So this does come in really handy for that. The other thing you could do, if you don't have an SNES Advantage arcade stick and you want to get down on some Street Fighter, some Mortal Kombat, some Killer Instinct and use an arcade stick, the one thing you could get is the 8-bit though SN or NES 30 arcade stick. Um, so I did previously review this and I did some modifications to it, changing out the buttons and whatnot. And it was something that was kind of hard for me to recommend at the time due to the price point. When it was launched, it was going for 80 bucks and it used subpar parts, in my opinion, as far as the, the micro switches, the buttons, and the analogs, or I mean the, the stick, the arcade stick, the actual stick. All kind of modeled after Sanwa, trying to you know, be, you know, cheaper clones of Sanwa buttons and, and sticks. Um, but it works. Not a big deal. But like I said, at the $80 price range, I don't think it's worth it. If you can find this for a lower price, which up till recently, I'll have to double check. These were going on sale for around $50. And I think at the $50 price range for what you get is worth it. $80, it's kind of tougher to swallow there unless you already have components to modify it to make it a little nicer. I just wish, you know, for the $80 price point, they did include a little higher quality buttons and stick, but it is what it is. We can't, you know, go back in time and fix that. We can just fix it ourselves or just deal with it. Like I said, for the price point, if it's around 50 bucks, it is well worth it and a must buy in my opinion. Over that, uh, kind of weigh your options. Um, but as far as something that you can use on multiple systems, you can use on either your analog Super NT or even your original Super Nintendo. This is pretty legit, pretty cool stuff. You know, you can use this on the Raspberry Pi, anything else, PC, doesn't matter. So moving on to, like I said, I do prefer to use original Super Nintendo controllers, but those controllers are not the longest in the world, especially for our setups nowadays, you know, Back in the day, I think a lot of us with our tube TVs and whatnot, our smaller TVs, we were kind of, you know, our living rooms were kind of situated a little closer to the TV maybe. Um, and over time, you know, with TVs getting bigger, getting flat panel, HD TVs, you know, our distance from the TV, the viewing distance has increased. So we've kind of accommodated and, and changed to that and, you know, rearranged the way our living rooms are, the way our gaming setups are. Now, the one thing I can recommend, is to get extension cables. 
Now these extension cables both work on the analog and on original hardware and other clone hardware. They are both six feet long. Um, one is made by Retrobit and the other one is Tommy, which I believe is Hyperkin. Um, and they bro both work just fine. There's really no major difference in them. Um, pretty much they're, you know, they almost look identical, like the same mold and whatnot, but there, there might be a few little differences. I'm not 100%, but either way you go, they will work. Um, I've tested it on the analog using the newest firmware, the 4.4 firmware, and I've had no issue. So one end you plug in your Super Nintendo controller and the other end you plug it into the analog or your original Super NES. These right here in particular can be found on castlemaniagames.com for cheap, man, like really cheap. So if you wanna peep these out, you can check them out there. Link will be in the description for most of the stuff I'm talking about here. Um, and if anything is available on castlemaniagames.com, you can use my little special code, Pixel10, to get 10% off. Um, but like I said, these, these cable extensions, they're pretty nice. Gives you an extra six feet and they are very cheap, few bucks. Um, and that's pretty nifty there. So another thing I wanna talk about is options for playing games. Um, obviously, if you have an abundance of original cartridges, you're set, set it and forget it. You got your games, pop them in there, good to go. Some people are not, you know, into collecting so much but are still interested in this device just to to have that better option of playing these games through actual hardware um, and the system does a great job at that and they have been continually fixing little issues with the newest firmware updates but we do have options we have options for cheap mofos and then we got options for people who have no issue spending money throwing money around right so for the people who want to keep it cheap, even though if you want to keep it cheap, why the hell are you buying this thing? This is like $200 after shipping. But hey, no judgment here. We can't judge nobody here. But say you got this, you might already have a small collection of games, and you don't want to really expand upon that. The next thing I can recommend, and this is a no-brainer, is getting an SD card. I personally recommend SanDisk. Um, I'll put a link in the description for these. SanDisk for this particular device, I would recommend either 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes. Reason being, um, if you want to play games through your SD card on this bad boy, there is, you know, a jailbreak out there that is pretty awesome. And it does mirror the newest firmware update for the system, has all the newest perks and, and little fixes. So you can get that jailbreak and use a SD card to put the jailbreak on your system or to update the firmware. That's the biggest thing. If you want to keep up to date on firmware, you do need an SD card. But if you want to play games off the SD card, do the jailbreak. The jailbreak is continually being updated, um, compiled by Smoke Monster out there. And then the next thing to do with Smoke Monster is you can get the Smoke Monster SNES EverDrive SD2 SNES packs and put them on here. I don't recall the actual size of that pack, but I know I use a 16 gigabyte card and it's, you know, there's a little bit of space left with the additions I've put and, you know, on top of that pack. But I would recommend either 16 or 32. If you go 16, you can put the whole pack on there and have room to add games. Um, if you go 32 gigabytes or above, you can start throwing on your, you know, other games that you want, additional stuff, all that kind of craziness. So that is one option. To play games through Jailbreak or to update your firmware, you do need an SD card and I recommend SanDisk. Link will be in the description. Now the next thing, that's a cheap option to just play some games. But you're limited on that kind of as well because you're not getting special chip games um, as far as, you know, FX and then like the CX4, Mega Man X2, 3, um, and then Star Fox, Yoshi's Island, you know, there's a handful of games you won't be able to play at this time through the jailbreak. Now, if you want to spend some money, you already spent 200 bucks on this system. You don't mind spending another 200 bucks. I would highly recommend an SD2 SNES. Uh, the thing with this is it does support most of the special chip games. You could play all your, um, Mega Man X games, two and three will work on here. 
um, it, and you know, all the DSP games, stuff like that. Like, you're gonna get a wider variety of games. I'll put a link so you can see the actual chips that this supports. Um, it does not support FX at this time, so unfortunately, if you want to play FX games, you will have to own them, or buy them, um, or emulate them somewhere else. But as far as playing on this hardware or anything else, this is a cart that I could highly recommend. It is expensive. Like I said, you do get that. If like, let's just be honest. If Mega Man X two and three mean something to you and you want to play on hardware, then yes, I I would recommend this. Um, if you want to play MSU1 games, the uh, CD-enhanced Super Nintendo games, I would recommend this, right? And it's the same thing with the, the SD card. You do need an SD card. I would recommend either 16 or 32 gigabytes for this bad boy. Um, 16 gigabytes, you'll get the whole Smoke Monster pack on there and have room for additions and stuff that you want to add. I would recommend going a little bit higher if you want to add those MSU collections on there because they are pretty big. So this does support that, and that is pretty sweet. But it is an expensive, expensive option. Worth it, yes, but it, it's pricey. So I can't recommend it to everybody. But I'll put a link in the description. Typically, there's a couple places you could find these that are legit sellers. Definitely beware. Don't just jump on an unknown eBay seller and buy one of these. You might get a clone or, or copycat one. You want to get an official Crix. I never know if I'm saying these names correctly. You want to get an official board. Um for this so that's one thing now leading into to games talking about the games either through sd card sd2 snes or if you have original games um the other thing i can recommend and you can also get these on castlemaniagames.com is a one-up card so the one-up card is pretty sweet um typically the way it's going to work is one side is going to be for fluid and the other side is dry and it's a nice little hefty pad there. Not really, it, it, it almost seems like there's a little bit of a, abrasiveness to it, but not really. There's just some texture to it. It's like a condensed down like sponge almost, but it's got enough texture to it where it's not really gonna grind away at anything, but it will get rid of a lot of filth and build up and polish up those, those pins on your games pretty well. So essentially, you know, I've seen a lot of people not even use fluid on this, but I would recommend a high percentage alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, um, and don't over saturate it, just get a little bit on there. And then one end, you just slide that bad boy in there, both sides, clean it up, then take your dry side and clean it up as well. Pretty easy, I highly recommend these for all your cartridge based games to keep them clean. These are especially handy if you just wanna test games out that you've gotten in lots or off of eBay and stuff. You don't want to put a dirty cartridge in your new system, even your old system that you have taken care of. So this comes in handy for that. Testing games, making sure what you just bought works. Um, but I also, usually when I buy games, I open them up, polish you know, the, the, uh, the pins. I'll use a pink eraser, alcohol, um, all that kind of stuff. And I have a whole process I go through. Um, but these kind of help with finishing that off once you've put everything back together. Just give it a quick polish. A uh, quick cleanup and you're good, but if you don't want to open your game so you don't have time for it, using this will do the job. It's pretty awesome stuff. Very cheap. I believe you get them in like three packs for a few bucks. Um, not too expensive there, right? So the other thing that I could recommend, if you have to have cartridges and there are carts that are very expensive and you don't, you're not really into EverDrive, so the SD2 SNES, you want to have a physical cart for each game or you know, multi-carts, that kind of thing. There is a company that I've, I've dealt with plenty. Um, I've bought a lot of games from them. Never really had an issue. Uh, and that's RetroCircuits.com. So you can get these pretty sweet carts. Like this one, for example, is Super Mario All-Stars with Super Mario World and all three Donkey Kong countries on one cart. And this is a heavy cart. These games that they put together, they use the highest quality components you can find. They make sure they are running at the proper voltage so they will not damage your existing old school hardware or your new stuff. Um, so that is a definite plus, you know, stuff like that. You can get uh, Sunset Riders, Wild Arms, I got there, Secret of Mana 2, you know, English translation, Castlevania 4, Dracula X, multi-cart, pretty awesome stuff. 
Sailor Moon R and Sailor Moon Another Story. Yes, I wanted this and I got it from them. Um, and then one that they actually put together specially for me would be the Sim Collection. Really wanted this and I asked them if they can make it for me because it wasn't listed on their website and they do take special requests. So you can always shoot them a message like, hey, could you make me a cartridge with this game, this game, this game, this game? But for example, if you want to ask them for this, um, they did design this label and everything after I'd asked for this collection, but I've got Sim At, Sim City, Sim City 2000, Sim Earth, and now including Populous. What? Pretty awesome stuff, so prices will vary. Uh, they also do have Star Fox 2, the SNES Classic Edition version on cartridge. Pretty sweet stuff. So highly recommend if you don't mind buying repro carts, um, you know, you can be against them, you can not be against them, you can be all for them, you can be hesitant. Whatever it is, if you are curious about what they offer, you can go to RetroCircuits.com. I get nothing out of it. It's just a company. I appreciate, you know, what they've, you know, provided me as far as buying these games. Um, I think they're doing a pretty cool service. So, like I said, I don't benefit from any of their sales. Just like CastlevaniaGames.com. If you buy anything from Castlevania, I'm not getting anything out of it. I'm just promoting a shop that I think is pretty sweet and has done me well over the, you know, over time. I don't know how much time, but over time, you know what I'm saying. The next thing that I'm not gonna be able to give you any specific links to, but is something that I do, and that is collect Super Famicom games. So if you have to have an actual legitimate release cartridge, consider Super Famicom games, especially for this system, since you don't have to modify it or anything. It plays North American games, PAL games, and Japanese games, no problem. Uh, but if you don't understand Japanese, obviously don't buy Final Fantasy VI, don't buy Final Fantasy IV, don't buy Secret of Mana, Chrono Trigger, stuff like that. Stay away from those kind of games if you do not understand Japanese. But other games that either require very little reading or just are in English anyway, like, for example, Super Metroid. It's a lot cheaper to get the Japanese release of it, even though it has an English option in it. Both the Japanese and the American version of the game are identical. They both have Japanese or English on them. You just select it when you start the game. So that is one. You can definitely get that game a lot cheaper than the North American release. Other games, you know, you can get a little bit cheaper would be like, you know, some of the, uh, the, the like Star Fox, like, you know, some of the Super FX games that you don't really need to worry about reading too much. Super Mario Kart's a lot cheaper. Stuff like that. Um, Super Street Fighter. All the Street Fighters are cheaper. Um, Japanese versions. Uh, Hagane. One of my favorites. Such an expensive US game. Uh, if you get the Japanese release of it, it's pretty much identical. The only text that's really in the game is the level names when the stage starts. But it'll say like stage one. There'll be like some Japanese writing there instead of whatever, you know, it is. Sewer or whatever the hell the... The level names are called, but Hagani is a very cheap game compared to the U.S. release. This is going up in price, but pretty much identical to the U.S. release version. The other thing I want to mention that is one collection that I was super happy to get um, is all the Mega Man X games, X1, 2, and 3. You buy these all together. X is not an expensive game in the U.S., but once you start getting to X2 and then especially X3, you're looking at a ton of freaking money. Um, hundreds of dollars to get the whole set in the US, especially if you include Mega Man 7. So I got these four games, all three Mega Man X games and Mega Man 7, which in Japan they're called Rockman. So look for Rockman X or Rockman 7. Um, I got all four of these games plus Final Fight complete in the box for 70 bucks shipped. That was a pretty damn good deal in my opinion. That was five games. Yeah, five games. For 70 bucks pretty awesome stuff you just got to look out for those deals that's just a tip more so not not really an accessory just a tip like certain games you can buy the japanese release and be okay um i don't i don't prefer the plastic and the case you know that they used on these comparing to a written like the the u.s release versions for some reason i like the cartridges better they just feel a little nicer to me the japanese and pal carts they kind of i don't know there's a difference in the plastic they use, obviously, and there's slightly different colors. So, I don't know. They feel a little bit cheaper, but the games play just the same. And pretty awesome stuff. So, 
that was pretty much it. I just wanted to do a quick little, I mean, it's not really quick. This video has gone on for too damn long, but I love this system. I really enjoy it. I have an original Super Nintendo as well, plus several other clone systems. Super Nintendo is one of my all time favorite consoles in the world. M bunch of classics, games that I just love having and love playing. And these are some accessories and items that I could recommend if you're going this route or if you were looking for you know, some additions or recommendations to add to your Super Nintendo experience. So I appreciate you guys stopping in, smash that like button, subscribe, do all that cool stuff, and I will catch y'all next time. Boom!